My name is Irene Salama, Environmental Health Officer for Chiretsi District, uh, under Maswingo Province. Uh, my job description um, entails issues of quality monitoring, water quality monitoring, premises inspections. Uh, let me just start about water quality monitoring, what exactly we do. We collect um, water samples, be it borehole or piped water schemes, any water that is used for consumption. We test it if, to see if there are any coliforms um, that is part of our job. We also conduct premises inspections, uh, looking at uh, food quality, uh, expiry dates, uh, all those kind of things in shops. If the place has got uh, adequate ventilation, um, adequate sunlight, uh, just to show to, to, to check if the shop is uh, convenient or it's friendly or if it's okay for consumers to use it. We also um, do uh, IRS as well, it's also part of us. We also conduct health education uh, in many areas uh, depending with what's happening in that uh, situation in terms of like COVID-19 we're also conducting contact tracing uh, when we had COVID-19 uh, the whole country we also do follow-ups when it comes to TB uh, currently as a country we have been uh, hit by cholera we know we're an outbreak uh, of cholera. As environmental health practitioners, we are there to make sure that we prevent or contain any cases from happening. And how do we do that? Uh, we make sure that we disinfect all affected areas. For instance, if there is a case that comes to a health facility and it is suspected to be a cholera case, we conduct investigations. Firstly, we ask that person where that person is coming from, uh, what that person ate uh, within the 24 hours, if that person had uh, traveled within uh, two weeks, just trying to find out where that person might have uh, contacted um, the cholera, the, the, the bacteria, the Vibrio cholerae. We also ask about the source of water that they use and also when it comes to the sanitation facilities. That is if we're in a, a health facility. We do, however, have some cases where we just receive phone calls from the community telling us that uh, there are some people uh, being suspected of having cholera. For instance, like I said, I'm in Chiredzi. We did have some cases, or we are having some cases in an area called Mapanza in 132, where we received a phone call that people were just uh, lying on the road uh, looking for transport to go to Chiredzi. So what we did firstly was to talk to the area EHT to make sure that people uh, stay in their compound so that there is no migration of the cases uh, so that we can contain the, 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 the bacteria or the disease in one area. Us as the rapid response team, which comprised of the environmental health, community department, pharmacy, uh, the, the, the clinicians, we, we lab, laboratory as well, we, we went to the area of Mapanza just to look at the area because we're having some we're receiving calls that they the, there were people who were just not feeling well so we had to go and investigate so when we got there we noticed that uh, the people were presenting with signs and symptoms of uh, cholera and their health facility that is nearby is about 20 kilometers so we had to try and uh, the clinicians had to try and resuscitate because they were now just on the ground they were trying to resuscitate them, while least us as a department, environmental health department, were now disinfecting all the areas that they were using, whether they were throwing up or having diarrhea. And then the lab uh, team was also collecting uh, stool specimens. Us as the environmental health department, we also had to start, start doing our health education, uh, take, take water quality monitoring, just as to check uh, the, the water that they, they use and also just to check the sanitation uh, coverage, how it was. That is when we noticed that um, Mapanza compound uh, comprises of about 120 rooms. It's a compound meant for workers and uh, farmers, uh, that is Mkwasini Estate. 
so there were about 120 rooms and the population was roughly around 416 so meaning that the place was overcrowded so upon investigations as well we noticed that the area only had two squat holes that were being used by all those people meaning that most of them they were practicing open defecation uh, that was the issue that was uh, noticed and also when it came to uh, water source they have uh, a pipe daughter scheme but when we were looking at the pipe daughter scheme it was noticed that it had so many leakages that were contaminating the water like I said this compound uh, most people were practicing open defecation and also having a water source that was leaking there was a very evidence of contamination of their water so we had to have a meeting with the farmers and we agreed that uh, there was need for us to assist each other to construct toilets for the workers and also rehabilitate the piped water scheme while just looking at the other issues we agreed on starting with at least 10 squat holes but uh, at the meantime we had to act fast we had to do uh, temporary structures so that people would have a place where they can uh, defecate and not uh, conducting open defecation um, and then uh, also having a temporary structure for the cases on the first day I can say that was on the 11th of January 2024 we had about 20 to 30 cases like i'm saying this was a compound it wasn't a health facility we just it was more of an emergency response we had about 20 to 30 cases of which around 20 needed to be re rehydrated and using iv fluids since it wasn't a health facility and there were no drip stains uh, our curative um aside especially the community health nurses uh, had to come up with innovations on how to do that. That's when they had to use uh, tree branches. Uh, while that was happening, we had also to mobilize tents and we engaged the civil protection unit to assist us. We had to go and uh, collect a tent from the nearby uh, health facility where there were once many cases and a uh, partner, WHO, had intervened. So we had to go and uh, ask for some of the resources that they've been helped with so that we can come and help at Mapanza. Um, day one, I can say it was around 30 cases. Day two, they moved up to around 75. They kept on uh, increasing up to around day five. Yeah, that was on the 16th, 15th of January. And then from there, uh, cases started declining. As we speak, I believe everything is now stable. Cases are around maybe 30 in K compared to the highest that we had that was about 120 something cases in K. So now cases are a little bit, they've declined and uh, Rita is taking care of the water sources and I believe a borehole has been drilled in that area with um, uh, compliment from the I uh, hear the Royal District Council in partnership with the MP for the area and uh, sanitation facilities the toilets they are under construction as we speak we agreed that we start with 10 for the community while at least we construct another 10 as well so that uh, we know the ratio is 1 is to 30, 20 per squat hole. so at the moment uh, the Chiredzi RRT and also the Chiretsu Civil Protection Unit uh, tried their best to contain the, the, the cholera cases because they are only in Mapanza area. If we had not done that, I believe we would be speaking something else, but we are very happy with what we did because we managed to contain it in one area. Yeah.